What's going on guys? This is Knasty390 here. Welcome back to another MLB 19 the show franchise mode. Today I'm giving you guys some franchise tips and tricks, especially if you're newer to franchise or just you want a little bit more in depth, kind of help explain things because it can be a little daunting, it can be a little confusing if this is your first year doing it and I want to help out you guys who are maybe want to get into it but are a little worried about like, oh, what does this mean? What does this do? And this will help you guys out. Now, if this video helps you out in any way, do me a solid, drop a like on the video, and subscribe if you're new. I mean, I post franchise videos every single day. Currently, we are rebuilding the Baltimore Orioles. It's a little bit of a struggle to start it off, but we'll get there in time. But let's just go and take a look at some things, because this is, I feel like the big thing is budget, because it, it is all over the place. Because you get your yearly amounts these guys make here, which is, and this is a really great screen. I use this screen every episode, or I look at it all the time. You see how much budget you have. Now, if you turn off budgets, or like, you, you, then this doesn't matter. But I always play with budget on. Um, so, a couple things. Like, you can sort it. You can sort it by, you can go every year, you can sort, you can see how much money I have in 2022. I have three contracts. Uh, and the thing is, when you look at it here, it's weekly. So it's seventy-two thousand a week. If you go to a contract extension, it's then back to a year. But it does say at the bottom how much it is a week. It says one point one million a week, right underneath payment uh, payout structure. We found out, um, and I'll show you right now. Basically, twenty-eight million is equivalent to a million a week. So twenty-eight million a year is equivalent to one million a week. So if we go back to the screen here, and let's see if my budget it says. This says seventy-two thousand a week. If it said one million a week, that means basically I have twenty-eight million dollars I can spend on my team right now. I could go sign a free agent worth twenty-seven point nine million dollars, basically, and I could afford them. That's a great way of figuring it out. And if you're in the red or negative, it's the same thing. Um, and another thing people have asked me about because there's contract extensions now. You can do them two different times in the game: spring training, which I'm currently in, and also. The, week, the time frame from after the All-Star game up to the trade deadline. So the All-Star game is in the middle of July. The day after the All-Star game up to the trade deadline, you can get a contract extension then. The reason why, as you just saw in real life, a bunch of people sign contract extensions at the end of spring training. Then usually players in real life say, I don't want to talk about my contract. The, and then they added it in, and I like this, um, from spring training, I mean, excuse me, from after the All-Star game up to the trade deadline. Because let's say you're going to make a trade. Let's say... Hypothetically, I haven't signed Chris Sale yet. It's July 25th. And the Red Sox, for, let's say, are out of contention this year. They're having a bad year. And I go to Chris Sale and I'm like, Chris Sale, do you want to sign an extension? And let's just say his interest is really low. Like, it's in the yellow or red. And I'm trying to sign him. He just doesn't want to come. Or I know, I, I realize, wow, he's asking for a lot more than I thought. I can't afford him. I'm going to lose him as a free agent. Well, now you know you're right at the trade deadline. I can trade them and get something back in return. Or you're like, you know what? This is just a blip in the radar for the Red Sox. They're going to come back next year. I'm going to sign them to a new extension right now. No, we're going to be back again next year. So that's why they have it there. Now, in contracts, they do have a couple things they've added this year. It is backloaded, frontloaded. And some people have asked me, what does that mean? So it's always been normal in prior years. Now it's going to be front and backloaded. And it basically sounds what it like. It, it is what it sounds like. So backloaded means the payment is backloaded, which means less money up front per year, more at the end. Front loaded is the opposite. They're gonna get more money now, less in the future. It's great. For instance, in my Baltimore franchise, and I'm doing another franchise on Twitch, we were front loading a bunch of contracts because we weren't good, but we had money to spend because we were not really paying any major league talent. So we were like signing our young players front loaded contracts, and in like four or five years. We don't think our team's going to be good. They're only making a couple million, and, but they're making like eight million now. But in like four or five years, their contract's only two million. I'm going to show you guys right now with Chris Sale. So I'm going to front load this contract, and I'm going to back load a Mookie Betts contract. So you can so the exact same amount, and they both signed. Now you're wondering which players can you offer contracts to? Players are in the last year of their deal, and that's it. And then you're wondering, well, Ben and even Betts aren't in the last year of their deals. They are basically signing one-year deals. Young players sign one-year deals every year, basically, unless you go and give them an extension. So it's basically any impending free agent or any young player. So we just signed both of those guys. So here we go. Here is Mookie Bet. So we 
front uh, backloaded his contract. So you can see here, year one, I'm paying him 20 million. Year two, 23.1. Year three, 27.1. Year four, 31. Year five, 34.9. And then year, actually, excuse me. He sent a five-year deal. This is sorry. This is, I just realized something. I was like, this doesn't make sense, and it doesn't. So, when you do a contract extension, it doesn't delete the previous contract he had. Mookie is making twenty million this year, so that contract extension kicks in next year, so in twenty twenty. So that first year he's making twenty three point one, and then twenty seven point one, and thirty one, thirty four point nine. His last year is thirty eight point nine. Like I said, this is a great situation if if you uh, backload a contract, if you don't have as much money now. But you may have some guys who are coming off your books in a year or two, and then you can afford these guys. And then Chris Sale, again, that $15 million is what he's currently making in 2019. And then next year, he's going to be making 38.9. He's going to be making a, literally $24 million more dollars next year. But then by the end of his contract, he's going to only be making 23.1. Like I said, this is a great situation if you have more money now, but you think you're going to have less money in the future. So those are great times to use that. Like the whole budget system can be very, very daunting for some people. I hope that did help out the budget and the new contracts. There's also GM goals. Uh, I This only really matters if you have GM contracts on. I tend to not have them on because sometimes they have unrealistic expectations and they will fire you even if you, let's say if you're purposely tanking for two years, you have like the top 20 prospects in baseball and then they fire you because you're not winning. But like, let's say if you're the Baltimore Orioles, you haven't won in two years, but you have all these great prospects. Would your owner be happy with that in real life? Of course. You're the Orioles, and you're a long ways from winning. So I really don't like that. Um, another thing is unlockables. Go to sponsorships. Do this at the beginning of every franchise. Equip sponsorships. This is important. It is, especially if you have, it's only important if you have a budget on. But if you do, equip these. And change them too. For instance, if I am a bad team, I'm not going to put 30000 per win on it as a, as a sponsor if I'm only going to expect to win 60 games. But if I'm expecting to win 100 games, put that on. If I'm a bad team, I'm going to do per game, maybe per strikeout. Like, like match it to your team. If you have a guy who steals a bunch of bases, or your team that thinks you're going to steal a bunch of bases, stolen bases. You think your team is going to hit a lot of home runs? Per home run. So just be smart about that and get some extra money. Morale, um, I don't go and hold up a lot into this. It's pretty simple to keep people happy. Um, play them where they sh you expect them to play them. And that basically is all about managing expectations. So when I sign free agents, I tend to, if you go back to contracts, you can give them expectations. A role every day, platoon, depth, and star. And you can do it with pitchers. You can do ace, rotation, depth, which is like a long man. And then with bullpen, if we have a bullpen guy, we do. It is closer, depth, bullpen. So your closer is your closer. Bullpen is setup man, middle relief. Depth is like a long man or a guy who's going between AAA and the majors. Manage expectations. Don't just say like tell every player to sign them. I'm going to make you a. You're going to be a star. A star in the for a lineup is a number one, two, three, four, five hitters. So don't tell, I'm not going to tell Jackie Bradley Jr. if I send him to an extension, you're going to be a star batting 8th or ninth. He's going to be pissed off. Another thing that can, uh, changes morale is their team role, or actually, which is actually going to be their contract, so depending on how much they're making. And sometimes that can, you can't afford, like they just have a breakout year and they've signed a contract already, they're going to be upset. Not every player will hate that. Coaching, I always try to get a potential co coaches, we'll get into that in a minute. Region, so it's where they're from. Um, some players care about that, some don't. Jack Bradley does not. Team performance, uh, individual performance, which it kind of stinks because if they struggle, their individual performance goes down, which brings on the morale, which makes their overall worse, which makes it harder for them to succeed. It's like a snowball effect. And then injury. So those are the things. Um, and you also get your Twitter, which is completely useless. <laughs> um, now, I think that's pretty much it on this part I want to go to. There are top prospects here. I always tell people to look at this to figure out who are the best prospects. These are just computer-generated, so none of these are real. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so let's go a little bit further into the franchise and go over some more things for you guys. Okay, so another thing I want to go over are just some settings. If you go to user settings and go to mode specific, these are all franchise mode specific things. I'm going to go over all of these for you. Critical situations, on or off. It's kind of like March to October. They'll be like, oh, this is a big, important game, part of a season. If you want to turn that on or off, that's what it is. Um, lineups and rotation. If it's manual, you have to do all that yourself. 
um, building your lineup, setting your rotation, or you can put it to automatic and the computer does it for you. I always do it manual. 40-man roster, I always do that manual. So it's basically who's on your 40-man. What a 40-man roster is, uh, it's players who are eligible to make it to your major league club. If a player is on, playing on your major league team, they have to be part of your 40-man roster. That's basically it. Obviously, you can have 40 men on it. Roster moves, uh, basically in-season moves or whatnot, I always put that in manual. Scouting, I put that to automatic. I'm going to get to that in a second. Waivers, I would put that to manual. It's basically if you send someone down into the minors and they don't have any minor league options, they have to clear waivers. For the most part, they do. Drafting, manual. Injury management, manual. Actually, I do that MLB only, so I don't have to worry about all the minor league players just getting injured. Management about hiring and firing your coaches, I put that to manual. Trades, pretty simple. I put that to manual. Manual means you do it yourself automatically. means the computer does it for you. Free agency, manual. Contracts, manual. And that's it. Um, and then also, if you want injuries on or off, go to, right now I'm at gameplay options. Hit R1 a couple times to get to general. Then hit R2, and here's injuries. You can put them on, manual, off. I usually just put them on, on. So, you can also turn on box. You can turn on ejections. I think they have, they used to have uh, rainouts here too. Um, but in the most part, that's basically it. If you want to do your gameplay settings, it's all right here. But you're used to that for any other game mode. So, if we go to scouting, this is the reason why I do scouting automatically. So, you can see here, the f there are blue chip prospects in scouts. So, if we're going we're gonna to just sort the accuracy. So, the higher the bar means the uh the chance of them being properly scouted so when you take a look at the accuracy bar if it's full they're completely scouted and it's green the lower so if, if it gets to i think it's like 75 percent the bar will be green if it's like 25 to 74 percent the bar is yellow if it's less than 25 percent the bar is red um now to scout what you have to do is discover a player wait a day and then scout a player it is very tedious time consuming and perfectly honest, I just hire the best scouts, and I let them do it, and it's work for me. So if you want to figure out how to hire the best scouts, go to Contracts, which is on the same screen. Go to Scout Contracts, and then just hire one. There are four different regions, East, West, Central, uh, Central and International. Um, so I always hire one from both. So here's, I'm going to hire this new International. I'm going to hire a new West. I'm going to hire a new Central. And I'm going to hire a new East. They're the best ones I can afford, and I'm going to let them do all the work. And now, there are stuff players called blue chip prospects. So it's right here, see the, on the left, right next to their name and right next to their position, it has a little blue circle. I'm not sure if they're, current, they're called blue chips. I call them blue chip prospects. These are like the can't miss prospects. These are the big ones. that are gonna, All these kids are going to be going in the top of the draft. Most likely, all of these kids will be taken first. So if there's 20 of them, they're the first 20 picks. If there's 17, they're the first 17 picks pretty much how that works so if you are having an op option to draft a blue chip prospect draft them um i won't go too much into the draft itself i might save that for a future video if you guys do want that just let me know in the comments down below but let's continue let's go a little further in this franchise and go over some other small things for you okay so the draft just happened no i didn't actually draft my players i just simmed it so let's go to sign draft picks as you can see here's the draft so you can sign your draft picture. You can only sign them to one-year deals. Basically, just sign them whatever they want. Um, and you're going to see their potentials and everything. So there's like these potentials are 87, 86, 86. A B potential is 80 to 89. A, an A is 90 to 99. A C is 70 to 79. D is 60 uh, to 69, I believe. And then F is 50, uh, 60 or lower. So I signed all mine. One thing I've noticed this year, some teams don't sign all their prospects. Now this guy right here, Isaiah... Corcoran, he's a deep potential. I'm not too worried about him. I've seen in a few franchises, they've like passed on some, like they just don't sign like B potential kids. So let's see if there's any. Right here, Herschel Leal, the Astros did not sign him. Now in real life, this does happen when players can't like reach an agreement. In this, I don't understand why it would be. Now, if I like him, be like, you know what? I would love to sign Herschel Leal. It's kind of like a free prospect. He's a B potential. He's 19 years old. He's 45 overall. I want to sign him. You can sign him as a free agent once you get into the offseason. So offseason starts, go to free agency, and then you can sign him right there. We're going to look at that and I'll show you later in this video. 
So let's see if there's any other names. Right here, Eric Mossy, 86 potential. He couldn't come to an agreement with the Washington Nationals. And he's a 56 overall shortstop. He's 20, 86 potential. Like I said, this is a great way of maybe finding a few prospects, especially if you're rebuilding, you don't have many. Go through this. Here's another guy, Adrian Hildago, another guy who didn't sign. So go through these. Oh, wow, I just see this guy's a 99 potential. He will be a, a, a beast. So there's that. Now, also, I do want to show you a little tip because as you see these players, let's take a look at a prospect. Um, Sam Travis right here. He has an A potential. Now, is that a 90 or is that a 99? Is it a 96, a 92? It matters. There's a way to find out. If you just go to edit player, go to attributes, he's a 91 potential. Now, if you want to see it for a starter, it's a little different. Go to them, go to edit player, go to attributes, and you have to go to batting and fielding, and this guy's an 87. So that's how you can see the potential for them. So let's go to the off season. I'll show you guys a few other tips and tricks real quick before we end the video. Okay, so we are now in the off season. So there's a couple things I want to show you. There's something with the qualifying offers. This is how you can get some extra draft picks. Um, now let's say Rick Porcello, I want to offer him a contract, and this guy would normally not give him a qualifying offer. You see how much he's asking for, $7 million a year. A qualifying offer is worth $18.2 million. You must know, if you think you're going to lose a free agent and you want a draft pick compensation back, you have to tender a qualifying offer. Just by doing that, go to qualified, tender qualifying offer. That's all you got to do. You can now offer him a contract or whatever. So look, uh, let's say I can only afford a five-year, let's just say an $80 million deal to the Bogarts. I want to offer it to him. I don't know if he'll accept it, but I'm going to offer it to him. But I already offered him that qualifying offer, so if he decides I don't want it, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is just send him a couple days. Let's see if he, signed, if he signed it. He did sign it. So even though his bar wasn't full, he was like, you know what? I like it here. I'm happy. So Porcello, we didn't offer him a contract, but I did put that um, qualifying offer on him. So we are now at, uh, let's go one more day. We are now at free agency. So first things first, let's go find the... That uh, third baseman who was a prospect who just didn't sign. So there's Hidalgo. This was one of the guys who was a B potential. Um, and the other guy was like a 40-something. Right here, Herschel Leal. So you just go to him. I might give him a couple hundred thousand extra. Just to make sure if another team comes in and sees him, offers him like 90,000. Well, I gave him like actually 20,000 more. You can't give him like a, a long-term deal. You're stuck at one year. I think you can go up to as much money as you want. So I guess if there's like a stud and you want to make sure you sign him, I could do like a one-year 3.4. Obviously, no one's going to match that. Um, now, let's just go and look at all uh, players. So you see next to Doolittle, it says qualified. And you see Garrett Cole says qualifying offer made. There is a huge difference between the two. Sean Doolittle, what qualified means was he was eligible to receive a tender contract, a qualifying offer, but he did not. Garrett Cole was offered a qualifying offer. Now, you're wondering now, what does it take to be qualified to get a uh, qualifying offer option to give someone? They have to be on your team for a full year. So if you trade for someone at the trade deadline, when it comes into the offseason, you can't give them a qualifying offer and get a draft pick for that player. Just keep that in mind. So it looks like, um, I'm assuming Washington, did not give Sean Doolittle a qualifying offer. Which is fine. Um, they decided not to. For me, as someone, I know he has more value to me if I'm trying to sign him because I don't lose a draft pick. You're going to lose your second round pick if you sign someone So, who got a qualifying offer made. So, for instance, if I wanted Garrett Cole, and let's say I signed Garrett Cole, I won't have my second round pick next year because he was offered a qualifying offer. Same with Goldschmidt, same with Anthony Rendon, but guys like Grandal, Moro, Bumgarner, Jeanette, Ozuna, they were not given qualifying offers. So I can sign these guys as many as I want. I won't lose any draft picks. That's just something else that you want to do. And in regards to arbitration, a little tip. If you guys didn't know, arbitration is when um, players have three to six years of, three to five years of using Major League Baseball time, and they can get contracts. Or you can go to an arbitrator where you, they say they, like, Eduardo Rodriguez wants $4.7 million for one year. I think that's high. I think you're worth, in my opinion... 3.6. An arbitrator will decide which of the two is best. Now, let's say I want to give Ben Attendee a contract. 
if he doesn't accept that, he can become a free agent unless you just save yourself an offer, a qualifying offer. So every player, when you offer it to him, make sure you offer him a qualifying offer. Because if you don't, and they don't accept your contract extension, they become a free agent. Just keep that in mind. I've made that mistake before. So I think that's pretty much it I wanted to go over in this episode, guys. It was a little longer than I anticipated, but I want to just help you guys out as much as I can. Um, if this did help you out, please, like I said, drop a like on the video, sub if you're new. I'll talk to our little boys. Take it easy. Peace.